Hi, Steve Prisky here. Um, coppering the hull of the Flying Cloud Clipper ship. And let me get this one stern piece in place. I thought you might find it interesting how I go about doing a copper plating of the hull of one of these ships. And it's going to take about 1,200 copper plates to complete the copper plating of the hull of the ship. And as I mentioned in a couple previous videos, I'm using these uh, photo etched brass copper plates that have uh, hundreds of little dimples on them uh, replicating the rivets that were used to attach the real copper plates to the hulls of these ships. So they're very, very realistic, very costly, quite expensive, and boy are they a pain in the butt to work with. They're, they're uh, so well uh, made uh, detail-wise, but they're so thin, they're actually just a little bit more than aluminum foil thick, uh, that they're very easy to wrinkle up. And of course, once they're wrinkled, then they're uh, sort of useless as far as using them on the ship model. Um, what you have to do is remove them from the trees, these uh, copper trees, and then uh, trim off the edges a little bit, and then uh, apply them to the ship hull. And all of this is a little bit of a special technique, so let me uh, take a couple minutes here and show you how I do First that. step in uh, getting these copper plates ready for application on the hull is to remove them from the tree. There's these photo etched brass, see how thin they are? Photo etched brass copper plates, and uh, so you use a little pair of scissors and snip those off. Once that's done, you do end up with these little tiny tails on either end of them, so you have to trim those off. Um, I'm using the scissors to trim them off, and then if necessary, I use a little flat file to make sure and get the edges of them just perfectly straight. Um, if you're careful with the scissors, though, you can get it done just right with the scissor. There we go. Now, next, down on the hull, I've got one already in place here. What I rattle out any paint and any glue that you see, like that, so that uh, you get a perfectly flat space to put your plate into, and also that it abuts up next to the other plates perfectly. And even the slightest little bit of glue left over from the previous application or a little too much paint and you'll get a bulge. Now there you can see that that matches up perfectly. See that? Yeah. So you can see that matches up perfectly right there. And what I'm using is a X-Acto knife tip to push the edge down so that it's perfectly flush before I put any glue in there because once you put the glue in that's it. Uh, I, I'm using a real thin Sio cryo glue so it's going to adhere instantly. As soon as it touches the metal and the wood it's, it's already adhered. And uh, I put a little tiny tip or tiny drop of glue in between the, the last two plates just like that and let the capillary action pull it or seep it in underneath the plate. And then I'm using this dental tool, a little flat file dental tool, to smash down this plate. Now, I don't push down too hard because I don't want to uh, delete the rivets the, uh, that are part of the, the plates there, the realistic looking rivets, but I push it down really hard with this tool to squish out any of the glue that's underneath it and also to get the glue on all sides. Again on this one corner here where it touches the previous plates, Right there, I put a little drop of glue and let that seep in and then push down hard. Now, if you're really quick with your fingertip, you can remove a lot of that excess glue so you don't have to use your X-Acto knife too much before applying the next one. Now, here's something that's uh, to consider is I don't put too much glue on this exposed edge right here because when I put the next plate in, I'll be putting in a bead of glue right between that and the next plate, and so that'll suffice for as, as much glue as is necessary there. So all of these right here will get a little additional glue by putting in the sequential plate the next one. As I pointed out in a previous video, the book that I'm using as a reference for how to copper plate the hull of the uh, Flying Cloud and other clipper ships and ships from the uh, 1800s is this book called The China Tea Clippers by George Campbell and uh, this has got the most detailed schematic I've ever seen of how to copper plate the hull of a ship so you can see here how I've replicated that along the uh, bow and the water line 
it'll look a little bit better once I complete filling in that one section there. But uh, the real important part that uh, is sort of unique here that George describes is how to uh, copper plate the uh, stem, the cut water in this case, the cut water up here. And then as we go along, down along the keel and the keel of the ship. There's a couple of little special techniques that I thought I'd show you close up. Uh, the tricky part is that you've got to get the, the uh, plates to do a little bit of a compound curve. They have to curve down, over, and then down again. And uh, the problem that I started to have, most people will have, is that a lot of the copper plates, when you go to make that kind of a bend, they'll pop off. So I've got a little technique on how to keep them in place while you're bending. Now here's what I'm talking about as far as a sort of a tricky situation is you have to be able to get these plates, these copper plates to curve. Here's the copper plates. You have to get them to curve, watch this, like that, tucked right up against the false keel that's, un that's laid underneath the real keel. The problem is, is when you do what I just did, very often this copper plate will flip up or actually come unglued. So the trick that I learned Here's what I do, is I take medium weight glue, not the real thin stuff, put a little tiny drop of that on the bottom of the copper plate, and then I position it where I'm going to have it on the keel. And then after I let that dry, I'm using lightweight glue just underneath the edges of the copper plate, right underneath here. And so when I do this next step, which is, watch this, right there, I've curved that over, the instant glue grabs it and holds it in place. Now here I'm going to show how easy it is to uh, splice in or actually uh, trim the existing pieces of copper plating um, in order to make a next piece fit. Uh, due to the curvature of the hull, you're going to start to run into this kind of a situation where you can see I've butted up the next copper plate to be put in place, but there's a little small gap appearing right in here, right there. And so what I'm going to do is trim this piece right here. And it's amazing how easy it is to trim this with a super sharp X-Acto knife. And given that these copper plates are paper thin. Um, there. I first create a, a scribe mark, not pushing down very hard with where I want to trim. And then the next two or three passes, progressively harder. And you can see, look at that. That piece snapped right out of place there, right out of the way, and now it's going to allow me to put in this next copper plate without any kind of a gap appearing. I'm going to trim the next one here to follow on, make it match just perfect. See, look at that. Very, very tiny little, I don't know if you can even see that on camera, there, that little tiny piece. It was the one obstructing. Now I'm going to measure this so I don't trim too far past it there. Now you can see that there's absolutely no gap where I'm going to put this copper plate in right here next to the previous one. So I'll hold this down and put just a small drop of the cryocyle glue under the edge and let the ca capillary action suck it underneath the copper plate. Put it up. All right well that's uh some of the close-up details of uh, how to uh, copper plate the hull of a flying of, the, of a clipper ship, in this case the Flying Cloud. Um, as I mentioned, there's about 1,200 copper plates in total that I'll be putting on the model, and uh, it's about three quarters done. So I've got another 350, 400 to go, uh, probably about another week. This is really laborious, but boy, it sure is going to be worth it. Uh, once I do complete it, I'll post one more video on uh, some more of the details of copper plating the hull of the ship. And I'll uh, uh, show how I use a wire brush and the Dremel to clean up all of the oxidization that started to take place. But actually, this is going to be the last time that you'll get to see the model, uh, the, the copper plate part of the model, really shiny. Because this commission calls for the Flying Cloud to look as she looked on arrival in San Francisco following her maiden voyage. Uh, and so after that uh, 89 days at sea, the, uh, the hull would have started to show already some uh, oxidization, some a greening effect uh, from exposure to the salt air, and even some barnacles and so on. So I'm going to be replicating some of that weathering uh, after I complete the uh, copper plating of the hull. So one more video uh, uh, will show it uh, looking really pretty, and then after that I'll show uh, how she looks weathered. Thanks for checking in.